picture this. Sitting in a courtroom and suddenly hearing this sound coming from the judge's bench. And then you hear it again. Turns out that noise came courtesy of Judge Donald Thompson's penis pump. His owner had not so honorable hobby of filling the lengthy court days with more pleasurable recreational pastime. As one news article worded it, masturbatory workplace habits. Meet Donald Thompson, 59 years old, had been a judge for almost 23 years, presided in Creek County, Oklahoma. And very often, he was followed by this sound. So the chain of events started when, during a first-degree murder trial, a police captain was giving testimony and the two-hour-long police interrogation video was shown. The police officer sitting there suddenly heard a sound coming from a direction of the judge and when he looked over he observed movement under judge's robe and they too running under there as well. So at the courtroom break this investigator did what investigators do. He investigated. He also told his supervisor who had also stated he heard the sound in the courtroom. So together they went to investigate and they found the origin of the noise on the floor behind the judge's bench. It was no blood pressure cuff or bicycle pump as it sounded like, but it was a pump all right. To inflate, well, the judge himself, it was a pee pee pump. The investigators took three photos of it and that was that for the day. Who do you even tell? Where do you start with this? So, after simmering in it for a few days, the investigator called the Council of Judicial Complaints in a neighboring county. And from there, the snowball started rolling and gathering, well, tea and evidence. When the State Judicial Review Board opened the investigation against the pump judge, more witnesses emerged who had not dared to say anything before. His court reporter testified that she had heard and seen the pump already a few years ago and in several court cases. She also had at some point taken a few pictures of the pump under the chair, thinking no one would ever believe her if she told anyone or if she had to tell anyone. She did tell about this to her friend, to her husband and to another court reporter, who then later also testified seeing judge with a tube running under his robe. The clerk also said that one day she was having been sent to run an errand during a trial and when returning she was seeing judge sitting on his bench with his pee-pee in one hand and the pump in another. He quickly lunged forward to hide everything. But she said she saw enough. Jury members from previous cases also were questioned and many of them said they heard the f sound. And most of them were thinking it's perhaps an inflatable hemorrhoid cushion or maybe a hydraulic adjustment is not working right on his chair. And when the investigations over his little hobby started, Judge Thompson made some smart moves. He made sure to fire his court reporter right away as she was cooperating with the investigations. And then he submitted his retirement letter on the exact day the judicial court was scheduled to start. And by doing so, he initially stopped the ongoing formal action to remove him from the bench. It would have been actually ended here. He would retire from the bench, acknowledge his guilt, get some repercussions and that is it. But no, not only had Donald Thompson the pumped up peepee, -pee, he also had some balls to go with it. The great balls of ego. He went on and gave interviews about him being framed and all the allegations were fabricated by the sheriff 
to get him off the bench because he was not cooperating with the crooked police. Guess what? Oklahoma Attorney General was like. Well, he wasn't having any of it. He appointed the district attorney to investigate the matter, which led to finding more raunchy evidence. Not only was another pump found at his chambers, the samples taken from the courtroom chair, his robe and carpet around his bench lit the area up. And there was also explicit photos in his state-owned computer. And on these photos, judge himself with one of his female business partners, namely Angela McLanahan. She will have a significant part in the story as it's unfolding. There was enough to charge him with felony indecent exposure which led to filing criminal charges against the judge and a good dose of national ridicule. And then the R-rated court case started. Picture this. The pee pump standing in front of the jury most of the time during this court case and both defense attorney and the prosecutor occasionally picking it up and squeezing the handle, demonstrating the sound. The jurors had to see the prosecutor and the defense attorney pantomiming the, well, the act that went on under the robe to ask the witnesses, is this how the movement was made? Is this what you saw? This is so ridiculous already. And adding to the embarrassment, the former co-workers who had walked in on him or with his pipi on his hand had to actually describe what they saw. And then Mr. Thompson's physician was called to testify to confirm that his description matched the other witnesses. Imagine your private parts are like described in detail to the whole everything. One of the jurors from earlier cases actually said she heard the pumping sound. Now insert the prosecutor taking the pump and squeezing it to ask if that was the sound she heard and she saw the judge's robe covered arm moving consistently with the noise also. Now insert the prosecutor again mimicking the movement and asking is this what you saw? And an interesting fact that is very crucial in this case. The clerk said that when installing the new microphone and sound system to the courtroom was in order, then the judge really protested against it. And it was just a year before it all started to leak out. The judge had several times tried to switch the microphone off. And as we know now, Thanks to the new sound system and new microphone, actually the whole courtroom could hear the... Which actually surprises me right now. At this point, he knew people were asking, therefore they were hearing the sound. Why the heck do you even go forward doing this? This man just doesn't know when to stop. I think he felt really, really super confident and no one can touch me kind of way. Otherwise, there's logic. If people ask about it and you're doing something idiotic, then you just stop. You stop. That's it. Judge Thompson also took stand on his own defense and hear this. He said that the pump was a gag gift from a friend for his 50th birthday, so nine years ago, and it's not even working. He also said that he indeed kept the pump under his bench or in his office, but didn't use it, yet admitted to randomly squeezing the pump's handle during proceedings, but never ever pleasured himself with it. What is it then, Mr. Thompson? Is it the lucky pee-pee pump you carried with you to your cases for good luck and wisdom, maybe? 
and the randomly squeezing thing? What's with that? Why? Maybe stress ball had been a great idea? No? And was it working or no? Apparently, the forensic investigators had picked the pump apart when taking DNA tests from every nook and cranny. So the defense right away went for prove it. It was actually working. But when the second pump was presented, the case was done. So the pumping judge was sentenced to four years in jail, eligible for parole in two. He was ordered to pay $40,000 in fines and he lost his judge's pension and he had to register as a sex offender. Damn, the fall of the pride. Should have kept his damn low profile and not be cocky. There's a saying, if you have just avoided drowning in shite, don't friggin' chirp. Pretty high price, I wanna say, compared to what he was offered before. This is not over yet, there is more. Remember the business partner? The one who had an affair with the judge and who was on the pics with the judge in the office computer? Well, she was the prosecutor's star witness in the court case. And she failed to show up. Surprise! So a bench warrant was issued and when officers went out to arrest her, she was nowhere to be found. Not at home, not anywhere. Nobody knew where she was. And because of that, her testimony and evidence of the explicit photos was thrown from the case. They only found her after, when it was too late. They found her car at some acquaintance's house, who apparently was also a repairman for her car. So they knocked on the door, and when the repairman opened the door, he said, yes, she was here, but uh, just went out of the back door. Well. Apparently she jumped the fence and ran into the wooded area behind the house. Oh, and did I mention that one of the judge's cars was standing at the same house as well? The plot thickens. She finally got arrested and bailed out, had a minor slap on the wrist and off she went. After the judge was jailed, she found a new love and moved hoping to live happily ever after. But the pump judge thought differently. After serving 20 months, he was released for good behavior. He tracked her down and started to observe and stalk her from a distance. Imagine she ran from the police and from the court to save herself and his like reputation at least some, a little bit. And then he comes out and starts harassing her. And now, for the grande finale. He, at one night, was peeking through her window. And her boyfriend went out and confronted him. Let's say he roughed him up pretty good. Well, Terry Thompson is the former judge who got caught using a sexual device while on the bench. He was convicted of indecent exposure, sentenced to four years in prison, and served less than half that. Since he's been out, he's been arrested at least three times. This is the most recent of Donald Thompson's mugshots. It was taken when he was booked into the Creek County Jail late Thursday afternoon. An affidavit says his face is injured because he got caught peeping into his ex-girlfriend's bedroom window recently and her boyfriend beat him up. This new arrest happened because police say he was caught spying on her once again. Angela McClanahan says she got a flat tire on the way to work Thursday and pulled over in this parking lot in Sepulpa. She called police, saying Thompson was watching her. Sure enough, when officers got here, they say Thompson was sitting across the street staring at her through a pair of binoculars. She told them this is not her first flat tire. As a matter of fact, she said she's had 23 tires slashed in just the past two years. The affidavit says Thompson told them he saw her and the officers and just wanted to see what was going on. But they say his pants were unzipped and gaping open. McClanahan told officers Thompson has threatened to kill her in the past if she called police. 
She told them, he's going to end up killing me. Thompson has also been arrested for DUI and failing to pay his court fine since he's been out of prison. Thompson has bonded out of the Creek County Jail tonight. And that, my dear, is the story about the man who loved the sound of... Well, not the sound, probably. But thank you for watching. Thank you for bearing with me. And come again. Stay alert, stay mindful, and stay safe.